Hi, and thank you for joining this webinar entitled 21 Steps for Maintaining Health. My name is Julia Wilkins from the Health Management Department at Health New England. During this webinar, we're going to learn about how to practice strategies that can increase your well being for life. Our question for this webinar is true or false? So, do you think that being thin means that you have healthy body fat levels? And the answer is false. Um, one can appear to be quote unquote skinny or thin and be in a healthy BMI range, but they might have excess belly fat or visceral fat, which means fat around the organs. Fat, especially in the abdominal area, can cause hypertension, inflammation, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, thrombosis, and arthrosclerosis. These are all diseases that can come about over time by having high fat levels. It requires biometric screenings to see what a person's actual fat level is. So the way a person looks doesn't always determine their health. So we have 21 steps during this presentation, and the first one is to avoid the great white hazards. So if you've listened to any of our You Are What You Eat series, you know this was the first of those series as well. This is very important because we eat a lot of great white hazards in the American diet. So you wanna get rid of white flours, get rid of white sugar products, and replace them for whole products. A Harvard University study showed that 12 obese teenage boys were fed identical breakfasts and lunches on three occasions, and they had low, medium, and high glycemic levels. All of these meals had equal calories, but the boys ate more with the high and medium glycemic index foods than those compared to the low glycemic foods. Another Harvard study looked at 115,000 adults over 20 years and the foods associated with the greatest weight gain over that time were potato chips, white potatoes, sugary beverages, unprocessed meats, and processed meats. Those are all high glycemic foods. So foods that protect against weight gain were yogurt, nuts, fruits, whole grains, and vegetables, all low glycemic foods. So we talk about glycemic, what does that really mean? Well, looking at the chart on your screen, you can see how high glycemic foods affect your body versus low glycemic foods. High glycemic foods spike your blood sugar once they're consumed, they digest very quickly, and therefore making that blood sugar drop, and that in return you feel very hungry and you want to eat more very quickly. You'll see this all happens kind of laid out in a small amount of time. Eating those low glycemic foods, you'll see that the blood sugar remains stable. There's no spike. It digests slowly. Your blood sugar remains stable. And then you really have that sustained energy for fullness for a long period of time before you get hungry again. So it allows you to eat less and in return, maintain weight. Number two is to fill up on fiber. Studies show that the amount of fiber that you eat is directly linked to body weight. It's recommended that we have 25 to 30 grams of fiber per day, depending on your gender. Some of these foods include beans, fruits and vegetables, uh, high fiber cereals, and those intact whole grains like oatmeal, brown rice, and quinoa. You may see foods that are fiber fortified. That means fibers added back in these have not been shown to provide as many benefits as natural fiber, like in the foods I just listed. The University of California held a study with men and women feeding them three different breakfasts. So these were low in fiber and fat, another breakfast was low in fiber, high in fat, and the third breakfast was high fiber, low fat. Both genders had higher levels of fullness and the appetite suppressant hormone called CCK with the higher fiber meals. A Harvard study showed that 74,000 women over 12 years, for those who consumed the most fiber, they had a 49% lower risk of weight gain. So fiber really plays a part in maintaining weight. Number three is to pump up the volume. This means pumping up the volume of your food. It doesn't mean overeat. It means filling your stomach with high fiber and high water fruits and vegetables. Your stomach will feel fuller from volume, but these foods have less calories. Fill up on those non-starchy vegetables, so leafy greens is an example. Fill up half your plate at every meal. Add a little extra if you don't feel like you have enough in that plate. 
Start meals out with a vegetable and then always think of vegetables when it comes to snacks instead of going for crackers or chips. Think of a handy snack like baby carrots. This picture that you see shows 400 calories of different foods and how they fill the stomach. The left shows oil, the middle protein, and the right vegetables. So as you can see, the vegetables really fill up the stomach while with the oil and protein, you might be feeling hungry after consuming them even though you've had the same amount of calories. Stomachs feel full with volume, not calories. Number four is to give your plate full attention. This kind of plays into the concept of mindful eating. You really want to focus on your task at hand. When you're mindfully eating, there's greater awareness of emotional hunger versus actual hunger. Emotional hunger causes us to eat more even when we're not physically hungry. It develops a positive relationship with food. You won't use it as a coping mechanism. You use it for nutrition. It also increases pleasure and enjoyment of what you're eating because you're really tasting the food. It may decrease your food intake and also reduce stress because you're being mindful in the process. So to do this, you want to sit at a table, make sure you don't have a lot of other distractions going on, maintain that positive attitude, pay attention to all senses going on, and if you want seconds, make sure you wait about 20 minutes. It takes 20 minutes for the brain and the stomach to communicate that you feel full or if you're still hungry. Studies show that eating when watching TV can increase your caloric intake by 10%. So if you're eating every dinner in front of the TV, this can add up. Distracting activities include television, but also listening to the radio, driving, reading, texting, being on the computer. These are all things that distract us from eating and tasting our food. Please do remember that talking with others or being at the dinner table with your family is okay. Number five is to restrict your intake of fructose. It's a simple sugar that's found in fruit and processed sweeteners. But don't worry about eating too much fruit. It's difficult to overdo fructose via fruit. The unnatural fructose found in processed foods have much higher levels. So you wanna to aim to lower fructose levels, not necessarily omit them completely. This chart shows how much fructose is in common foods that we eat. And like I said, you don't really need to worry about fructose and fruit um, unless you eat massive amounts of fruits. As you can see, fruits have low levels of fructose while processed foods and sweeteners have a really higher level. Look, for example, raspberries have about three grams versus maple syrup and honey, they have in the 40s. Number six is the good one. It tells us to indulge in dark chocolate. So there's a lot of reasons why we can eat chocolate. Just make sure that you're eating about an ounce, so portion control, and you wanna look for at least 60% cocoa. We tend to eat less of the 60% cocoa because it has such an intense flavor. It can linger longer and be more satisfying to us. Also, that little bit of fat acts as an appetite suppressant and blocks the absorption of sugar so there's no crashes or hunger very quickly after eating. Dark chocolate also has flavanols, which are antioxidants and can help with insulin and can boost metabolism. Some other reasons to eat dark chocolate are that it enhances blood flow, lowers blood pressure levels, improves the blood vessels, lowers triglycerides, raises the HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and lowers the bad cholesterol, the LDL. It can reduce inflammation, improve blood sugar metabolism, enhance cognitive function, so brain function. It lowers the risk of heart disease and stroke, improves longevity, and can also just lift your mood and boost your energy. A study done at the University of Copenhagen showed that 16 males were given chocolate milk or dark chocolate. And after about two and a half hours, participants were given pizza and asked to eat until they were satisfied. Do you know that those who ate the dark chocolate actually ate less? Number six is to keep your meals and snacks flavor simple. Because we have so many senses, the more senses that are involved in eating, the hungrier we become. When we have those combinations of sweet and salty and savory and sour, the more that we have in one food, the more it causes us to eat. So we wanna choose snacks and meals with simple flavors. Now this doesn't mean boring flavors, 
You just want to work with maximizing one flavor and to make it as natural as possible. When things have that long list of ingredients, those are flavor turbocharged. So really look at the ingredients on products that you buy. Stick to fruits and vegetables, beans, lean proteins, nuts, dairies, and whole grain. And flavor these using spices and herbs instead of salt and sugar. Number eight, dump all those sugary beverages. This really means pretty much everything besides water, 100% vegetable juices, unsweetened tea and coffee, and skim or 1% milk. You want to dump the sodas, every type of soda, those fruit drinks, fruit juices, energy drinks, all those specialty drinks. They're very high in sugar and have a lot of calories. Like I said, our stomachs don't respond to calories, it responds to volume. So if we drink a drink that say eight ounces, has a ton of calories, but it's not gonna suppress our appetite because we're not gonna feel satisfied. So therefore, we're still gonna eat or consume a meal. Those drinks on the left also have the combinations of fructose, which we talked about, and glucose. This combination stimulates the appetite and disrupts the metabolism, not only not filling you up, but causing you to be even more hungry than if you had drink in the drink in the first place. There are many studies out there showing how it affects our body when we drink soda. Those who drink one soda per day we're two times more likely to develop diabetes. So not only does it affect our waistline, it could potentially cause metabolic disease. Number nine is to dig the power of protein. Protein is one of the best foods to suppress your appetite while giving you lots of vitamins and minerals. Studies show that those who eat more lean protein eat less at a meal and weigh less. Protein also suppresses the hunger hormone ghrelin for two to three hours. It also has amino acids which sustain energy and can preserve muscle mass, which is really what we want. We want a higher level of muscle mass versus fat mass. To do protein right, you want to have about 15% of your calories from protein a day. This can equal about 75 grams it really depends on your weight and your gender but when you choose those proteins make sure they're lean for example fish cup of milk beans greek yogurt eggs tofu peanut butter these are all great sources of protein and you can see the amount of grams that each of those carry and that can equal to about that 75 grams per day Number 10 is to never skip breakfast. Some people really don't like eating breakfast. Reevaluate that and see if you can start introducing foods at breakfast time, even if it's something small. Eating breakfast can aid in weight loss and weight control. It can kickstart your metabolism and boost energy right at the beginning of the day. Skipping it can encourage binging or eating high calorie foods, feeling that sense of starvation at lunchtime and you just want to eat everything in sight. Self-control levels are at their highest in the morning, so you're not likely to really eat unhealthy foods unless you choose to. The opportunities for lean protein and a high fiber meal, two things that we've already talked about, are a great combination. Things like milk, nut butters, smoked salmon, yogurt, cottage cheese, eggs, cheese, nuts, seeds, and protein powder can be combined with cereals, oatmeal, fruits, and vegetables to make a well-rounded, balanced, satisfying breakfast. Number 11 is to eat nuts. Nuts are packed with benefits, and studies show that those who regularly include nuts into their diets are healthier and leaner overall than those who do not. This is another food that can control your appetite due to the combination of protein, fat, and fiber. The fat helps suppress the appetite while the protein and fiber fill you up and have that sense of fullness. The ingredients in nuts can fight type 2 diabetes, macular degeneration, and inflammation. Inflammation plays a big part in cardiovascular health, so also can protect your heart. And nuts are high in monounsaturated fats, causing the small intestines to tell the brain that they are full. It can increase serotonin levels, so energy levels, those levels of feeling good. And they're very convenient. You consume a handful a day. They come in containers that you can take with you. Peanuts and almonds have the best appetite control. And you can really choose from a variety of whatever you prefer. Number 12 does not have anything to do with what we consume. It has to do with getting rest. You really want to be able to get those seven or eight hours of sleep per night. Studies show that hunger hormones increase with the lack of sleep. A good way to set yourself up 
to get a good night's rest is to create a good sleep environment. This is darkening shades, turning off technology, whatever noise you like or don't like. Uh, you also want to implement a sleep routine, so getting your body and your brain ready to go down at night starting about two hours prior. In that sleep routine, you might implement some relaxing habits, whether this is meditation, having a cup of tea, having a hot shower, and you want to remember to limit your exercise or eating to two hours prior. Those two things can stimulate the brain so it can keep you up or keep you from falling asleep. Decrease that blue light. This is anything like the TV, phones, laptops, tablets. Exercise regularly as long as it's before those two hours before bed. And you want to minimize sleep aids. Your body can become dependent on these sleep aids. So you want to be able to fall asleep naturally and stay asleep. Number 13 is to downsize your dinnerware. Throughout the years, our dinnerware portions, everything like that has really increased. So you might go to the store, buy plates, and not even realize that they're probably too large. So a way to fix this is to replace those large dishes with smaller ones. You can do this by looking for inexpensive, fun dinnerware at secondhand stores, or use a salad plate for your dinner plate. You can also use dessert bowls for regular bowls and teaspoons for the standard size spoon. Whatever you can do to minimize that plate. Research shows that the larger our dinner plate, the more we will put on it and therefore eat. Obviously, if you have less room on a smaller plate, you'll put less food on the plate and in return eat less. Bowls and plates can also play a visual trick on us because whether it's a small bowl or a large bowl, as long as we see it's full, then it's satisfying to our brain. Over time, eating less and having smaller portions can cause us to maintain or lose weight. No matter how busy your day is, number 14 is to always make room for exercise. We all know that we should exercise and get moving, increase our steps, but did you know that exercise can also affect your appetite? It can suppress your appetite. Exercise diminishes cravings for unhealthy foods. And since exercise is usually a stress reliever for most of us, exercise decreases emotional eating and maximizes fat burning, especially in the morning. The more muscle that you have, the more calories you burn at rest. The only way to increase muscle mass is to challenge those muscles for them to grow, and you do that by exercising. The amount of calories that you burn increases two to five hours after moderate or vigorous activity. So it's not even burning fat or calories during exercise. Your body continues to burn two or five hours after aerobic activity, and muscle mass causes you to burn throughout the whole entire day. Number 15 is to find strength in salad. So eat salad whenever you can. You want to maximize your greens. Fruits and vegetables require a lot of chewing, which slows down your eating. So try a salad as an appetizer to decrease your appetite for once the meal comes out. If you're not having a salad before your meal, make sure you fill your plate with two to three cups of vegetables. Look for all colors of the rainbow. The more colors, the more vitamins and minerals you will consume. And use those oil-based dressings like vinegar and olive oil. Fat and olive oil helps you feel fuller longer, and vinegar can boost the metabolism. You also want to omit those added calories. These are things like cheeses, croutons, bacon bits, creamy dressings that can really add a lot of calories to that salad when you're trying to decrease your calories. Another tool is to pre-plate your meal. If you've ever seen the Choose My Plate guide, this picture here shows you how you should pre-plate your meals at every meal. So sometimes in the morning we realize we didn't eat vegetables or at night we didn't eat fruits. Make sure you're including all of these for a well-balanced meal. We don't always have this picture in front of us when we're eating, so think about those visual cues like having uh, meat the size of a deck of cards, nuts the size of a golf ball, salad dressing the size of a poker chip, and things like that. Look at your food before and during a meal. It's very easy for us to be doing something else, not mindfully eating, and not even look at our food. And like we already talked about with our downsizing our dinnerware, use those smaller plates and bowls. People eat about 14% less when they pre-plate their food versus eating from the container or giving yourself less than you really want and then going back for seconds. 
This helps portion control and allows us to see our food disappearing as we eat. And this psychologically helps us. This is a tool for us subconsciously. Our next tip is to drink your vegetables. Drinking a fruit or vegetable juice that's natural has a concentrated amount of vitamin A, vitamin C, potassium, and antioxidants. It also helps to reduce your appetite because you're getting a great amount of fiber. You can get juices in one of two ways. You can either purchase them, choose low sodium, natural vegetable juices, really look at those added sugars, or you can make your own. And when you make your own, you would have to get a juicer, but you can create any concoction that you want. If you're really new to juices, you can start in small doses, but it's a really easy way to get a full serving of fruits and vegetables because four ounces of an all natural juice can count as one serving. Now beware of those high palatable foods. This goes back to when we talked about all those different flavors being in one food. That's a very highly palatable food. And when we continually eat these foods, our brain becomes hardwired to want more and more of them. Fat, sugar, and salt not only affect our waistlines, but our brain. These foods activate the reward center of our brain. So once this is activated, we will do anything for that high, if you want to call it. Over time, we rewire the brain and we are less and less satisfied with those foods. So this leads to what's called conditioned hyper eating, eating that's leading to pleasure and leading to desire to eat and it's a vicious cycle. So to rewire that brain back to craving healthy foods, we want to avoid those highly addictive foods. Even seeing them can trigger desire. Beware of the most common combination, which is sugar and fat. This is a combination found in ice cream, sweets, then even a bacon cheeseburger, loaded nachos, creamy pastas. Those are all the most common combinations of the sugar and fat. Don't even keep these things in the house if you can. And if you do, make sure you purchase or put them in smaller packages. So for example, don't buy a big jumbo bag of chips, buy those little lunch size ones so that they're already portion controlled for you. Empower yourself. Use strong language in your brain saying, I can or I will, and always fall back on those whole foods for your nutritional needs. This should be the majority of your diet. Number 19, take smaller bites. So why would this work? The more oral pleasure you have to food, the better your appetite suppression will be. If you eat a small bite, more taste buds are involved and your mouth can directly touch the specific tastes and textures and the higher signal of fullness you will get to your brain. This also increases eating time, so it allows your brain to catch up to those appetite suppressing hormones. It takes about 20 minutes for this to happen. So if you eat less in 20 minutes, you'll consume less calories. In return, you can stop eating when you're actually full instead of when you're stuffed because you ate a bunch of food in less than 20 minutes. This can also make you more aware of what you're eating, whether you actually really like it or not. It changes your habit over time, and low calorie, high aroma spices can encourage smaller bites because they have a flavor overload. We talked about keeping our flavor simple. We want to keep the overall eating experience simple as well. We don't want the abundance of food to result in overeating. So some of the things you can do is make dining out special again. Dining out usually results in huge portions, which we eat the entirety of. For that reason, avoid buffets. Try to prepare all your food, if not most of it at home, and use abundance in your favor. So we said the more food we have, the more likely we are to eat. The more fruits and vegetables we have, the more likely we're to eat those. Take away the stress of food preparation and having meals on the table and really keep it simple. Our last step is to, after all this, all of our planning, all of our learning, to really slow down and enjoy our food. Some of the things we do want to do is to spend at least 20 minutes eating, chew each bite, reserve time for eating and time for meals, potentially put down the fork in between bites, eat slowly, and lastly, breathe deeply. Get that oxygen flowing. Some things we don't want to do is to go back for seconds before that 20 minute mark, chow down real quickly, going in and out of activities or not having a lot of time to eat. 
You don't want to eat in front of the television, computer, or any other distractions. Don't forget to drink water throughout the day. This helps with hydration, which keeps you feeling full. Don't eat in a hurry. And try not to eat mindlessly. These are all things that we learned throughout this whole presentation. And if we bring them together, we can really be successful for maintaining our health. So now that you've learned all these steps, it's time to take the 21 steps to maintain health challenge. On this tracker, you will see some of the things that we talked about. Implement at least five steps per day by checking them off and seeing your daily total. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at healthydirections at hne.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this webinar. Have a great day.